Welcome to Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. I'm your host. We're broadcast live from downtown Toronto. I've got two guests on the show for you today. In the first half hour, you're going to meet Jody Steinhauer, who's the Chief Bargains Officer of the Bargains Group. And uh, she's here to talk about why giving back makes good business sense. Later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular good to know minute when I ask my guests for their top tip on creating a successful life. You'll hear Jody's. In the second half of the show, we're going to be talking about eco-fashion, so stay tuned. Jody Steinhauer, she is the uh, founder and president and chief bargains officer of uh, the Bargains Group. She's a recipient of several awards, including the Canadian Woman Entrepreneur of the Year, Canada's Top 40 Under 40, and the Humanitarian of the Year. She's based in Toronto, and it's such a delight to have you here in the show. Thanks, Shannon. Great to be here. Yeah, it's fantastic. Now, um, you look lovely in this color. I was uh, complimenting you earlier, but uh, you do. Thank you. It's springtime. We've got to uh, enjoy the sunshine, right? Now, now, of course, you are the chief bargains officer of the bargains group. Right. What does the chief bargains officer do? Uh, chief bargains officer is really a leadership and a new movement we're creating. And it's all about where the bargains are in your business. So bargains are value, not just cheap and cutting, but it could be your staff and how to empower them and to get more empowerment out of them, which is a bargain, so you're not constantly having turnover. It could be lowering office supplies. It could be maximizing PR and marketing. There's bargains everywhere you look. So I've been trained to look at the world through bargain colored glasses. Bargain colored glasses, I love it. But of course, uh, you weren't always uh, looking for bargains, or were you earlier in your career? What were you doing before you uh, launched? Well, I, I graduated from fashion many, many years ago, and okay. uh, I recognized though at a very young age I loved to shop, and I loved a great deal. And I was just very lucky to be able to incorporate both of those into my business and really start um, one of the first wholesale bargain companies in Canada before it really existed. I mean, now everybody talks about bargains. We're all proud when we go to Winners or, you know, discount and get a bargain. But, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't talk about it. If we got a great deal on something, we didn't walk around bragging about it. But now we do. But how did the, uh, this organization come to be? Well, I started idea. it off uh, many years ago as a wholesaler. I would buy a deal from a manufacturer or an importer, and I would uh, repackage it and resell it to stores across Canada, such as a small store uh, in B.C. all the way to a large giant tiger or a, or a winners and they would then in turn sell our bargains to the public and that's where we started the company uh, 24 years ago right so um, you know what kind of promotional materials or, or items do you do you sell them I mean tell us a little bit in, more in our in our other things. division we call it branding at a bargain so we'll take um, our famous two dollar t-shirt and we'll put someone's logo on it so whether it be a not-for-profit doing a walkathon or you know, a retail store needing to advertise sidewalk sale or a company, uh, that's our number one item. And we do it with eco-friendly inks and dyes. And again, it's a marketing billboard for anybody. But the t-shirt is the number one marketing vehicle you can do these days. But we'll do you know, a tote bag, a water bottle, a pen, any, any kind of item that you need to get your, your brand and your name out there. And we're the only company in Canada that does it in a discount uh, business model. Now, of course, you are famous for your $2 t-shirts, and I think 50 cent socks, is 50 that right? 50 cent socks, that's right, and thousands <laughs> of other items. How did you become well-known for the t-shirt? You know what, just word of mouth, really, the best form of marketing. You know, we used to sell them only to stores, and then one day a uh, radio station walked in and said, well, we need our name on it, and we said, well, uh, let's see if we can do that. And when we figured out how we could do it so much cheaper than the regular promotional product companies out there, it just became our number one item that everyone has asked for. And it's been tougher and tougher with the prices of cotton rising as everybody hears in the in the business papers in the last six months. But right. we're still we're still doing it at two dollars. Uh, and we will continue to do it for as long as we can. But it's a great billboard. I mean to think with a logo on something you can you can be under three bucks and you know people don't throw their t shirts out. Go to your closet tonight and look at how many t shirts you have that people have given you that are 10, 15, 20 years old. For some reason, we, we all have this psychological attachment to t-shirts. I wonder why that is. That's actually really intriguing. Yeah, but think about that. Go home today yeah, and, actually, and, and email so me true. how many t-shirts you have <laughs> in your closet. <laughs> I'm going to check it out right it's after the, the show. Best, it's the best billboard. And if you like a t-shirt, you, you hang on to it and you wear right. it and you don't, you don't throw it away. Yeah, that's you know that's, uh, that's so true. Um, I'm, d I'm definitely going to be counting that's my right. t-shirts. <laughs> now, 
Does this mean then when I walk into Winners, I'm shopping at Winners, mm -hmm. then a lot of your items um, that are there, or a lot of the items that I might see could actually come from the bargains. Well, group. Winners has thousands of vendors, mm -hmm. thousands, right? right? And yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's like anything else. It's a bargain is the right item at the right price at the right time. So you know, there's times where we have a lot of product there, and there's times where we have nothing. But our product is we're like a stockbroker; it's constantly changing, and we've built our business on basics. So we're doing things like underwear and socks and t-shirts and long johns and ski gloves and. You know, I always joke around and say I'm an accountant's daughter, so if I lose it in my warehouse for three years, can I still you know, sell it and, and sell it for more money than I paid for it? Because in, in fashion, it's a little more risky. Things evolve so quickly. You know, coming in and out of style, I'm buying large volumes, so I need to make sure that I'm either going to sell it very quickly or if I do get stuck with it, uh, I'll still be able to sell it. Uh, I have all the Olympic merchandise right now. I bought all, up all the Olympic product after the Olympics. But I'm still still selling it because I'm selling it at a real bargain, and people there's certain pockets of people who still want that. So you mean items that have the Olympic symbol on it? The official the, Olympic, right, yeah, yeah. We're selling toques and T-shirts, and but I mean we're not selling anything for I think over four or five dollars, and it was up to a hundred in the store. So consumers can actually go direct to you then, like if, through your website. Is that well, right? Well, if yeah, if you buy if you can buy a case, which is generally around twenty four pieces, you can be a client. So we're kind of like Costco. You can't okay. come in and oh. buy one piece, you have to buy a case. Right. But I mean, our business is B2B, but we deal with um, thousands of not for profits, schools, organizations. But we have single people who will say, I need, you know, loot bags for my child's birthday party. Can I buy a case of this? Or can I buy something um, and double the price and use it for fundraising? So we hear it all. Now, if. Um you know, your, your URL is bargainsgroup.com. Yeah, bargainsgroup.com. Right? So people can go and check out, um, you know, what you're, what you, what you're all about. Um, what has been your biggest challenge as an entrepreneur? I think just, you know, balancing growth and, and having the right people on the bus, as they say, which I think is right. always the, the biggest challenge. Um, we have the most, we have about 30, 35 people right now, and we have an incredible team. Uh, but you know what? The larger you get, the more complicated that puzzle seems to be. And we have really passionate people because a big part of our mantra is giving back and giving back and specializing in the homeless area. And when you're dealing with the homeless, there's a lot of crisis that's involved. I mean, there's not a lot of planning and strategic planning that can go into that. So you need to have the right people that can, you know, all of a sudden get that phone call at 5 o'clock and when a shelter says, oh my God, we've got bed bugs you need to come down and change all the linen now or else these people are sleeping on the streets tonight and right. I don't have to to say to somebody could someone help me out we just rise to the occasion and do it because that's the culture of the people that we've created at the bargains group and uh, you know we're really proud of it but it it does take a special type type of person to work there now you know we're going to talk more about uh, the importance of giving back and what it means um, uh, for for business sure. um, after the break but you know, I wanted to ask you, for you, I mean, you won uh, a number of awards. I mean, the Canadian Woman Entrepreneur of the Year, Canada's Top 40, Under 40, Humanitarian of the Year. These, these are great awards. What do you feel like for you when you receive them? Well, you know, it's, it's very nice. It's very validating. But, uh, you know, I always say to the team, I'm winning the award for what we do. I just get to be the figurehead. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's nice in the way that it validates what we do as a company. And we know that what we're doing is the right thing. It's recognition. Uh, and it also, for me, is a platform to talk to other people about why we're getting the awards. We're not getting the awards just because we sell stuff at great bargains. We're getting the awards because we're mixing the bargains and the philanthropy. And we're being leaders in the country. And that's really what the awards are all about, doing it differently and still being a profitable business. Now, Judy, we're going to take a break. Uh, and before we do, I know that you've got a great tip for the viewers. Well, I, I think it's all about attitude, and it's every day I look at everything in my life, encourage others to, with a big smile and a positive outlook, because the greatest opportunities that have come my way have come out of something that somebody else would have just walked away and been really negative about, and I've looked at it with a smile and found a nugget of gold in it. So, Thank you so much. Jody Steinhauer, Chief Bargains Officer of the Bargains Group. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, more of Jody.
Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner, and I'm joined by Jody Steinhauer, who's the Chief Bargains Officer with the Bargains Group. Um, such a pleasure to have you here, Jody. Thanks, now, we were talking before the break uh, about the importance of giving back and why that makes good business sense. And you know, one of your projects um, that I know that you, your initiatives uh, that you've got coming up uh, is Project Water. Let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, Project Water is in its 12th year already and it was originated from a conversation of a couple business people sitting around and we asked a, a famous street nurse, Kathy Crow, Kathy, what challenges do the homeless have in the summertime because we already had Project Winter Survival, which is our winter project, and she told me something that startled me and it was that more people in Toronto die of dehydration on our streets than they do of cold exposure. And I just said, that's crazy, this is Toronto, you know, we're not in a third world country. And she said, no, people can not survive without water. And when I started to investigate that and realized that you can survive with food for weeks, without food for weeks, but you can't survive without water for more than three days. Right. So as a business person, I went to my Outlook and I just started shooting out emails and saying, who, do, who does anybody know in the beverage business? Because I'm a connector. And today we're giving out a quarter million bottles of water. Wow. from our parking lot with uh, the generous help of Nestle Waters, who's an incredible donor. Uh, we supply, um, as of today, there's 107 agencies and homeless shelters and outreach programs that have applied for the water. Uh, on July 6th, uh, we will be awarding them water and we're also awarding uh, 12 permanent water filtration systems that will be installed and serviced for life from Danemark Water Care. So they'll all have Great. all day long and and what we're looking for is drinking reusable brand new drinking water bottles that we can give out to the shelters so that people can refill them get them washed at night and then come back the next morning so it's an incredible project that these shelters when you hear a heat alert these people don't have water and if they don't have our water they have no budgets for water and the drinking fountains in the city a lot of them aren't turned on and if they are people are not real thrilled about drinking from them right. and there's not enough the homeless population is not just at one or two parks in downtown Toronto throughout the city and they've really branched out so it's a big issue and it's something so simple. So um, if, p if people want to get involved or want more information about yeah, Project projectwater.ca Yeah, projectwater.ca is the website or they can get through it through bargainsgroup.com and uh, we're looking always for, we're looking for people to, you know, it's a great team initiative for any companies who want to take a couple hours off, bring out their team, um, give us a donation so we can buy a little bit more of the water bottles and have a really incredible giving back team building event. I mean, we're slugging a quarter million bottles of water and Home Depot does all the trucking and everything for us and then we load it, we hand bomb it into these vehicles. So it's a, there's a lot of footage on the website. So if you want to get involved, contact us. It's a great day. And you have other projects, uh, other charitable initiatives too. We founded Project Winter Survival, which is the winter version, and right. it's a, a massive project where we pack survival kits and again give them out to all the homeless organizations. There's over 30 items in a kit from a sleeping bag to all the basic necessities that you need to survive on the street, and that happens in January. But we're collecting now. We, we build about between two to 3,000 kits, so we've, we're already getting donations of products. So if you have any product to go into a kit, uh, hygiene products, mitts, gloves, socks, you know, the bare necessities. Uh, get you know Great. talk get to us or if you want to be involved it's it's we give out about half a million dollars worth of product that day and it's a community product it's a community project we love getting people involved and companies are looking for ways that they can give back bring bring their team in take a half a day off uh, and really make a difference and hopefully that feeling is contagious throughout the business community because we can't rely on governments or faith-based organizations to look after those less fortunate anymore there's just not enough money so when you go home from work at the end of the day, how do you feel? I'm not. I'm an entrepreneur. I never go home. <laughs> uh, I feel there's great. no I mean, end of the day. <laughs> there's no end of the day. Yeah, no. I mean, it's you know, it's like I'm passionate. I love what I do. It's it's it, it is my life. And you know, when when your children, I mean, I think the testament is when you can see your children educating people in their class and other kids. You know. The things that come out of their mouths. You know, I have a seven-year-old, and if someone says, "Look at that bum over there," he said, "That's not a bum. That's that's a homeless person. He's one of my mommy's friends, and maybe he just wasn't as lucky as we were." That's really what it's all about: changing the attitude of right. of, of people, because a lot of the people who are in that situation sure don't choose to be there. 
Right. So your charitable giving has actually also had impact on your family. Yeah, it's, it's an impact everywhere. I mean, my kids get involved. My, my Everybody at my company, I mean, that's what they're there for. They're there to give back. We've changed our suppliers. We've changed our customers. We, you know, win awards. We talk to thousands of people. It's just really making people think a little differently and giving people maybe an extra, a little bit of an opportunity. Right. Now, I just wanted to circle back to um, something we touched on uh, sure. earlier, and that was the challenges uh, of an entrepreneur. Um, and we, ta we talked a little bit about it, but how do you overcome for you uh, the challenges? You know, often you know, we're stretched, we don't have enough time in our fa for, with our family, cash flow is an issue. I mean, I hear it over and over again right. um, with entrepreneurs. Uh, it's a similar story, but you know, at different scales. Um, how, how, what are your keys that, that, you come, that you do to overcome your challenges? Well, I, I really believe in mentorship and advisory boards, so I belong to many organizations, so I have several um, mentorship and advisory boards so that, you know, I'm not in it alone. When I have people who I intimately trust and I trust their business acumen, I let them get close so that they can put me in my place. Uh, and one of the challenges of being an entrepreneur is having, you know, waking up in the morning or in the middle of the night and having four more ideas and not being able to turn them off and then flushing them out and people kind of keeping you on track so that you're really trying to stay focused uh, and only dealing with the most important ones at any one time. Jody, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show. Is there uh, anything else you wanted to leave us with? Any piece of advice or wisdom you'd love to impart? Just put those bargain colored glasses on and uh, hopefully everybody one day will have a CBO in their company. And, uh, Chief Bargains Officer. Chief Bargain Officer in their company and uh, you know, enjoy those bargains. Well, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, you are going to meet Kelly Drennan, an eco-fashion expert, so stay tuned.